Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Essie's Angling. You're joining me on a really mild autumn morning today. Um, some of you could probably tell by the backdrop, but I'm back at Lakeside Fishery. And we're gonna be trying out the solid PVA bags that we tied up in the last couple of videos. So this video is gonna be a continuation of the PVA bag series. And the reason that I've chosen this fishery, one, is because I know that some absolute chunks in here. So it's definitely a place that I wanted to up my tackle and uh, really try and target some of the bigger fish that are in here. The second reason that I've come today is because my dad missed out on the last session because he had a bad back. If uh, any of you are following the channel, you'll know that. And I think he missed out on some of the action a little bit. So we wanted to come back and give it another good go. Dad's fishing on the method feeders. Like I said, I'm fishing on the solid PVA bags, but I'll show you if my dad catches anything today. I've put him in the best peg. This is the peg that I were fishing last time. And my favorite peg as well. He always gets the best peg, don't you dad? Skill. Is it skill? Skill more than peg. <laughs> we'll see. We've got a nice breeze on the water today, which is uh, really good considering it's it's overcast and it's mild. Perfect fishing conditions, really, isn't it, Dad? It is. It's lovely and mild. So fingers crossed, we have a good day today. I'm pretty much set up. I've strung the bows. I've uh, threaded the line through the rod rings, and I've upped the tackle slightly. So I'm fishing with a slightly heavier main line. That's 12 pound Berkeley big game loaded onto them reels there so nice heavy duty i've had a conversation with the owner and i'm told that the fish go to well into 20 pound here and i do believe it there's a really good stock of double figure fish and again if you're following the channel you'll know that i got broke last time on 10 pound line so uh, i wanted to up my tackle come back here perfect place to try solid pva bags i'm going to have a rod down this margin here and probably a rod down the right hand margin too just off this pinnacle All I need to do to get fishing is tie my solid PVA bags on, which we're going to do now. We'll get them out, we'll get the rods on the bite alarms, and I'll keep you updated throughout the day. I've already got everything set up, rod pods set up, bite alarms are on. So I'm not going to be taking you through the full setup process today. And like I said, we're going to be using the PVA bags that we tied up in the last couple of videos. So they're ready to go. I literally just need to tie the stems onto the main line and we're good to go. So if you're wondering what's in that, I've got some DNA baits, crushed insect meal, and also a 50-50 mix of um, betaine pellets and also Aquastin Black Magic. Like I said, if you want to know how to tie up these PVA bags and you want to know exactly what I've put in there, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, give the last couple of videos a watch. I will put a link to them in the top right hand corner for you now, like I said. But yeah, I'm excited to try them. I'm hoping it's not too dark on the camera because it is still fairly dark. It's probably coming up to about seven o'clock-ish. Like I said, I've already got the, uh, the 12 pound line through the rod rings here. I'm just gonna find the end. I'm gonna tie it with PVA bag on. The rigs are obviously already on the PVA bags as well. I've tied up one with a mono rig and one with 15 pound braid. So one's got 12 pound mono and one's got 15 pound braid. This is the braid one, I know, because it's got a hole in the top of the bag. I'm just gonna tie this on with a Palomar knot. Very, very strong knot. Wet that down, obviously. And cinch that down tight. It's a very safe rig this, I will show you why when we get a fish or when we do a recast. Just going to trim off that long tag end there, but that's a solid PVA bag ready to go out. So the only thing I'm going to do to this, I'm going to take some of this krill and squid haze and I'm just going to penetrate the bag and I'm going to squeeze some in. Look at that, full of attraction that. And that's going out, just like that. Like I said, I'm going to be margin fishing today. No point fishing far out here. The fish will definitely still be in the margins. 
Rods that I'm using today are one and a quarter test curve, Gray's Prodigy. The only thing I'm going to have to be careful here of is not going into that tree. It's going to be a little bit tricky. That's why my dad's peg's better for fishing this margin. But I've no doubt in my mind that that's definitely the more productive margin under this tree. I might actually take my bail arm off and just underarm this. You might think I'm fishing close in, but I'm not worried about that. I'll just have to be fairly quiet today. I want my rod tip a little bit closer to the water. Don't want the wind catching it. Might be a while before that bag breaks down and we get a bite. It's going to be a sit and wait tactic, this. I'll probably leave it maybe an hour. An hour or two. The only reason that I bring it in is just to check that I'm not snagged around anything, the hook's not caught in any branches in the margin and stuff like that. So that's the only reason I'd be bringing it in. Otherwise it would literally be a sit and wait method. There's plenty of pellets around there. I want to tighten my bait when I drag a little bit. I'll get straight on that if we get a fish. Right. So let's get one of our other solid PVA bags. Trying to remember which is which here. It'll be fine. Now, obviously these are quick change. So I can literally just retie another bag on, on my next cast. If you don't know how to tie this knot, there's plenty of videos on YouTube but it's a very strong knot. Like I said, it's called a Palomar knot. This is the knot that I use when I'm going catfishing because it's the most reliable. But there we go. That's a nice big PVA bag again. Penetrate it. Put some of this goo in. Do it on both sides. A really fishy goo this and it's very fluoro so that's going to stand out on the bottom i might not catch as many fish as my dad on the method feeder today but like i said we're trying this new technique out it's great practice and i'm just going to put this one just out from that margin down there if you're wondering what hook baits i've got on them on one of them i've got a krill and on the other one sticky baits wafter batch berry which is the bright pink ones so one of them are matching the hatch and the other one we've got a fluoro wafter on i have got the nash speed loader with me today in case i need to tie up some more as well plenty of pva bags in there ready to go let's see how my dad's getting on had any indications yet dad i had three or four single leaps on that left hand rod i can see your tip went a little bit then as well it's good it's good if there's fish moving about this the wind's pushing right into this bay of yours here dad there's not as much activity in terms of bubbles and stuff like that as there was the last time i came they were they were blowing everywhere the last yeah. time i came yeah how are you fishing it today dad what are you using i'm on method feeders both rods and i've got uh, f1 supreme fish meal on one the aqua Stim. so the aqua Stim f1 on one and i've got uh, you got 10, 10 mil 10 mil pink on the other side and milk pink band and wafter on the other one my dad don't think anybody else will turn up today i think we, i think they might but we'll later on it's coming into autumn now and obviously all the fair weather anglers stop fishing which it makes it quite quiet on the banks doesn't it dad yeah, which is yeah a bit of peace just uh, me and my dad half the time during the week anyway just saying to my dad we're not scared of moving today if we need to just like i did on the last video here so if we don't have anything in this bay for the first sort of, I don't know, two hours, three hours, we'll probably move to the island swim. So I've just been watching around the island for the past 10, 15 minutes. And there's tons of bubbles coming up around midway. And we've also seen a carp splash in the margin around that right hand side. So I'm thinking it might be worth a move. I'm gonna give it another half hour. 
and uh, potentially consider moving. You just need to be on the carp at this time of year. Right folks, so we've made the plunge, we've had a bit of a move. I've cast a rig over to the island and I'm going to have one probably mid-water as well. So I'm just going to retie this PVA bag. So somebody messaged me after watching one of my PVA bag videos and they said, do you not know that you can use the cap on this as a scoop? I thought that was a really good idea. We'll put some mix in the bottom of that just to keep it held open for a second. dried that rig off so I'm just going to lower that in, hold the lead, get my scoop, get some pellets and, uh, and insect meal in there and then just put a little more over the top and then I'm just going to pack it down, start twisting and then just wet around the edge of this bag and push that down seal it easy as that PVA bag it's going to seal it a tiny bit around the top and on the sides also the corners make it a little bit more aer aerodynamic but we're only going to under it out there we go folks when it comes to moving obviously I don't recommend moving every two minutes but once the session's fine I don't see any problem with it as long as you're not disturbing anybody there's nobody else here so we took the opportunity and fingers crossed it was a worthwhile move we saw quite a bit of activity around this side of the lake some bubbles coming up a fish crashing in the margin down there where my dad is so just thought we'd give it a go and apparently the the island's always productive here even though i didn't pick up anything from the island last session he's in that one tied to Ireland, Dad. I told you we should move. You were questioning it last couple of minutes. <laughs> you were questioning the decision. It don't fit. It don't look like. Is it a big one? It's a carp, though, Dad, isn't it? Well, I think it is. Big <laughs> one. Well, it's a fish, Dad. Yeah, that's good to okay, folks, so these rods have been in maybe half an hour now. Um, the owner's just come round, I've just been having a chat with her. Uh, I'm going to stick with these methods today. I think my dad will catch more fish than me today on the method feeder again. And I think the method feeder for obviously these coarse fisheries and stuff like that is the better method for catching more fish. There's no doubt about that, but this is going to help me target some of the bigger fish we're using bigger wafters we're using stronger gear so if we hook one of the bigger fish we know that we're going to have a chance of landing it and like i said they go well into 20 pounds here i would love to catch something like that out of a standard match type coarse water like this i think the biggest i've caught out of a normal match style coarse water is i think it was about 15 pound which is a really nice fish and i'd obviously you'd take that all day long but I'm just after something that little bit bigger. So that's one of my goals through autumn and winter. But what I might do is next session, I won't fish two PVA bags, uh, two rods on carp methods like this. I'll probably have a sleeper rod in the margin or choose an area and, and fish that on the carp methods. Either a PVA bag or uh, a Ronnie rig or maybe like um, a chod rig, something like that. And the other one I'll swap between float and method feeder. So that's going to give me my best chance of catching a range of species, but also have that bigger sleeper rod out for uh, the chance of catching a, a big chunk. And I'll do that all the way through winter this year. I will be filming and doing videos through the winter. We fish through the winter months, don't we, Dad? <laughs> so we'll be getting some, buy myself some battery heated thermals and we'll be... Uh, out in all conditions folks oh yes here we go here we go here we go, here we go.
Cheers, Dad. What do you think? Is it a double, Dad? Is it? Oh, it's a bloody chunk, that. Oh, you see, waiting a long time for that fish then, but it's a chunk. So it's nailed there, right in the top lip. Batchew berry, wafter. As you can see, the inserts come out like it's supposed to. I think it's around its fin now, there you go. I'm gonna weigh it, but I think we're, I think it's double figures that there. It's not far off anyway. Really nice fish. Look at that. Won't even fit in a wide angle lens, Dad. <laughs> it's a proper chunk. But it just shows you that obviously I've been waiting a lot longer for that bite, haven't I? Yeah. And so the rings are gone, so the rings are gone. Yeah, I put it in water. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened there again folks, but I think the cart threw the hook on that other one. We just had a bit of a run. So the cart might be moving through this area. I'm just gonna quickly weigh it because I'm pretty sure it's a double. Start get, get myself a bigger weigh sling, Dad, I think. It's big enough. So my dad's just weighed it, it's 10 pound on the dot. Obviously I've upgraded or downgraded my net. <laughs> I'm not sure which, but it's called a scoop net. Just a little bit shallower, still the same width. Fine for these double figure fish. But what a lovely fish. Let's get them back out. Look at that. Like a professional. <laughs> so because the mono is quite stiff, because it's a heavy braking strain, it kicks it round perfectly every single time. So you don't really need any kind of rig tubing. Spooked a carp in that margin over there. It was, it was taking the rod, you're right. I was just um, doing another bag and it's gone off again, this one. This is the mono rig. Again, Batchew Berry. I just put Batchew Berry on it. And it shows they cut them big bags of metal. It's not been in a couple of minutes. No, exactly. Yeah, literally a couple of minutes, like my dad said. I don't think this is a big fish, but... Still a fish, Dad. Just need to be careful I don't stand on my other rod, because I was halfway through tying a PVA bag up. Again, this is to that far banking where there's no pegs. Have you got it, Dad? That PVA, that PVA bag's going to be melted on that grass. <laughs> They fight hard here, don't they? Even these small air carp, it's not, it's not tiny. It's that batch of berry I think they like. Yeah. There we go, folks. So again, so the lead's come off, as you can see. So the stem's free. And that is on my Mono D rig. It's got a little bit tangled on the take, as you can see. But that's worked perfectly. The D rigs come out of the way and it's left all that hook to penetrate into the carp's mouth. The, uh, the hook is not bent out this time, but it's still a lovely fish. Look at this mirror carp. <laughs> that's seven or eight pound. Lovely mirror. Right, I'm gonna get this other one back out. It's halfway through tying it. But epic, might be coming on the feed or they found the bait, it's towards that far edge, isn't it? Yeah. You just gotta find the fish. There we go. This is the hard bit, getting it in the right spot. A long rod and I've got trees behind me. Dad's got one after a while waiting. He was he was broke by a decent fish. 
on the hook point. It's a skinny one, that, Dad. Nice one, though. Nice dark colour. Feeling a little bit more hopeful now. I was all for sacking it off and getting back on the method feeders. <laughs> Didn't hear your alarm go, Dad. It's a better one. on that probably five or six pound you think take it easy at the same time don't <laughs> get away from the island <laughs> it is so snaggy that island like there's branches and all sorts coming down off it and the damn brambles and bloody everything i've been round it once today it'd probably help if you didn't have your reel set to roach drag <laughs> so you can get it in <laughs> yeah Twenty nine years later, Dad's still playing the fish. That's a nice one, that Dad. Oh, it's got a belly on it, you know. Oh, yeah. Look at that, folks. Nine pound, I reckon. Late eights into nine pound easy. We're holding up for a picture though, I think. That is a chunk. Nice one, Dad. Yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> it's got some weight to it, that. So all my dad's fish today have been on the Aquastim F1. Like I said, if you haven't tried the baits, guys, I will put a link in the description for you. I'm using the pellets as well. Like I said, a 50-50 mix of Black Magic and also the Betaine pellets, both in two mil. And they're just ideal for in them solid PVA bags. And hook bait, I'm using sticky baits, uh, Batchew Berry wafters. My side's gone a little bit quiet. Again, I did hook another fish before, but when I picked up into it, obviously there was nothing there. Uh, look, it happens sometimes, especially when you're fishing like this. There'll be smaller fish in here that'll just shake the hook out. They'll try and take these bigger wafters and then they'll shake the hook out. You won't always get a proper hook set. So don't be too disheartened when that happens. I think it's time for another brew. Well, me and my dad have decided to have the last hour or two back down in the bay. It's gone really quiet up this side. And there's nobody else here today apart from the cows up there just thought it'd be worth a try with the wind blowing down this side all day we might just pick up an extra couple of fish let's see all right folks rigs are back out got one to the far bank and one under this tree here let's see if we can pick up an extra couple of fish before we pack up got most of my stuff packed up just got the essentials out caught a method feeder on his last cast Preston's one. I knew it was worth it. A quick move on the Batchew Berry. This is over to the far bank. I just thought this wind all day blowing into this corner would really make a difference. give it too much stick I don't know how well it's hooked definitely ain't gonna get broke <laughs> it's not a big fish but like they all have been today a welcome fish it's not too bad I think it's a leather carp it's got a small set of scales around its back Cracking fish. Look at that. Absolutely nailed. Perfect cap. Look at it. Almost a leather cap. Beautiful. It's just got this small lateral line of scales. 
stunning fish. Nice belly on it. Got a few carp lice there. Let's get them off for it. Finally, my dad's got a fish down this epic margin. It's not been so epic today, has it, Dad? <laughs> Proper shot off this. I didn't think it was going to be a small one. They're, ne they're never small down that margin. It's where the big... Oh, my God, it's huge. Oh, oh, Dad, that's a big fish. Look at that. That's a double. Jesus. Fish it, right? <laughs> Usually wow. you say they're a very big <laughs> That's definitely not three pound. On the batch you bury that. Big wafter on a method feeder. Well, I think my dad's just beat me on weight. It's 11 for absolute cracker. Hold it up for us, dad. Let's have a look at it. They're always the biggest in the margin, aren't they? Yeah. Look at that beast. It's just a long fish. It's not got that fat, but it's a long fish. Beast. Oh. oh, that's me, that's me, that's me. This is holding strong. I don't think it knows it's hooked. A lot like that first one. It's just waking up, to be honest. There we go. It's a decent fish, this. Powering. Dad's fish was eight pounds something. Was it a common or a mirror? Mirror. Well, the mirror carp. This is a big common. A big common here, Dad. Really big common. It's a really big common. <laughs> really, really big. <laughs> oh wow. Nine pound summit it was with the uh, net edge. <laughs> oh dear. Look at that. No, it's definitely a double that dad, I'm gonna weigh it, but monster. It's heavy. Ten seven. It ten. is yeah, ten seven it is bigger than that first one. It's hard to get a scale for a Mont GoPro because it's wide angle, it distorts everything. Yeah. But, yeah. chunk. That's why we're weighing for you folks, so you can see that. But, you know, there's people out there that say that was a 20, isn't it, Dad? Well, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? Um, it's nice fish, Dad. Let's get it back. <laughs> My dad's just said he's glad that we come down here now. <laughs> I just had a feeling that the heavy wind blowing into this direction all day. You can see the toe on the water. It's been blowing into this corner all day. Obviously it started slow here. We couldn't get a bite here this morning. But I just thought with all this warm wind blowing through, then it's just going to drag all the fish down this side. They're in the margins. There's no doubt about that, or at least the bigger fish are. But definitely worth the move. I've had some nice fish there. Dad's had the biggest fish of today at 12 pound odd. And then I've had the second biggest two, uh, both just over 10 pound. But I think we've had four doubles today, which you really can't argue with that at all. That is a good day's fishing. Just saying to my dad that I'm reluctant to pack up because we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get many sessions like this again for the rest of the year. <laughs> Starting to get cold now. But the fish is certainly still on the feed. I thought I saw it before and it didn't look that big, but it, it's taking line like it's a bigger fish. Oh no, Dad, that is, it's, it's actually bigger than you think that, honestly. I, I bet that's another double. 
I'm in again. The rod was upside down. <laughs> Come running back. <laughs> the Batu Berry. It's like a weird, fully scaled mirror. Proper odd thing. Very deformed. Hooks falling out in the mouth. Ooh. Get that one back, I think. Look at it. Hanging. Just so everybody knows what I'm on about, I'll put a link to the Batu Berry wafters in the description for you as well. Anything of relevance or anything that I think might be important to you, I'll always put it in the description. So make sure you check the description out on some of these videos if you're not quite sure on anything. And I sometimes add like after notes and things like that uh, after I finish filming. But I'm so glad that we moved. Just shows you that a couple of moves in a day can be beneficial as long as they're logical and you've uh, got some theory behind them. All coming from that far margin. That's oh, unreal. Well, folks, the battery died there. It was another small mirror. Nothing on that margin, Rod. Could be a good fish to end on this, folks. Speeding round like it's a smaller fish. Uh, it's actually not that bad, I don't think. I'm going to land it in the next peg over because this is the way it's come. <laughs> nice stocky mirror. another double it's another double I think it's not far off my fish huh? really nice fish really nice scale pattern on it yeah interesting looking yeah, we'll land on that bonny fish great day's fishing well folks, I'm sure that you'll agree with me that the solid PVA bags have been a success today. I've had just as many fish as my dad's had on the method feeder and I think they've been a better stamp of fish as well. I don't know, maybe that's just me thinking that or maybe it's just luck. But I feel like the average size of fish that I've been catching today has been bigger than the ones that my dad's been catching. So I'm pretty sure that I'm right that the method will help you target some of the bigger fish that are in the lakes. So maybe try the technique out on your local water and see if uh, you manage to get anything bigger. If you do, make sure you drop a comment in the comment section and let me know what you've caught. But that brings our PVA bag series to a close. This will be the third or fourth video in that series where we're testing it out on the bank. However, I am going to be using the PVA bags throughout autumn and into winter but what I'll probably do is have one out on a sleeper rod like I said before and um, fish the method feeder or maybe float on the other rod just to give us a chance of catching something a little bit different maybe some silver fish and uh, what have you but in terms of targeting carp through autumn I think you should give the PVA bags a go and if you don't want to use solid PVA bags you could also use PVA mesh so once again thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next Westies Angling